Hello, this is Dr. Kausal Mohite, a pediatric pulmonologist from Mumbai. And today we'll be talking about an interesting topic, which is pulmonary manifestation of non-pulmonary diseases. Once we talk about pulmonary complaints, the most common complaints that we see are cough, fast breathing, and laboured breathing. At times, we have some less common complaints, which could be chest pain, blood in sputum, or any positional change in complaints. Before we start to differentiate a pulmonary etiology from a non-pulmonary etiology, we should find some classical signs which could be either persistent complaints, not responding to any given line of medications, having other localized or systemic manifestations and kids who are not growing appropriately. Once we take all these topics under consideration, there could be various other reasons for respiratory concerns. First, if a child is tachypneic, has dyspnea of exertion, having increased work of breathing, has recurrent respiratory tract infections, chronic cough, wheeze which is not responding to your given line of management, at times presenting with cyanosis, has significant failure to thrive as well as feeding difficulty, these kids could have an underlying cardiac anomaly. On examination, they could have clubbing, some murmur on auscultation, a gallop rhythm, a frank hepatosplenomegaly, some peripheral pulse abnormalities which could be bounding in cases like PDA or could be diminished in cases like coarctation. The basic investigation to find out is first by doing a chest x-ray in which you could see a cardiomegaly, increased pulmonary uh, infiltrates in specific left to right shunts, oligemic lung fields either in ventricular, right ventricular outflow obstruction, some features of pulmonary edema or even lobar atelectasis. 2D echocardiography stays the gold standard, however, a CT angiography or an MRI is used for some complex cardiac anomalies. Further, there could be kids with hypoventilation, intermittent tachypnea or dyspnea, having paradoxical breathing in which the abdomen moves in the opposite direction of the chest during inspiration as well as expiration, recurrent respiratory tract infections which could either be past aspiration pneumonias or even recurrent atelectasis involving different parts of the lobes, significant weak cough, some noisy breathing suggesting some upper airway anomaly, feeding difficulty and again poor weight gain. These are all features pointing towards some underlying neurological disorder. These kids have generalized maybe hypotonia, some abnormal breathing patterns, poor cough reflex, very important, poor gag reflex, some swallowing difficulty, pooling of secretions at times, hoarse or wet voice because of pooling of secretions. Could have altered neurological uh, behavioral consciousness, some poor muscle tone, abnormal cranial nerve examination or deep tendon reflexes. In these kids, a simple x-ray shows multiple infiltrates but very importantly to find out a diaphragmatic elevation because of weakness of diaphragm. A PFT might show reduced lung volumes as well as flows which points towards more of restrictive lung disease. A sleep study or a polysomnography shows hypercapnia or hypoxemia during sleep patterns. These along with various other specific studies like video fluoroscopic swallowing studies or functional endoscopic evaluation of swallowing also help towards finding out different causes of aspiration pneumonias. However, the definitive investigation of choice stays either your MRI brain or further genetic test to find out some underlying genetic disorders. Further, relatively more common are kids with persistent wet cough predominantly after eating or after lying down. They mainly come with recurrent V's which are often misdiagnosed as asthma. In younger age, they could come with recurrent apneas or acute life-threatening events. Some feeding difficulties, vomitings, increased salivation predominantly post-feeds and because of which these kids have significant feed aversion. Because of recurrent complaints, they could have even hoarseness of voice or upper airway strider. These kids are also failing to thrive, has some foul breath odor, have dental erosions, abdominal distension, palpable liver. Yes, we are all dealing with some gastrointestinal secondary problems which are causing respiratory concerns. Such kids are evaluated by doing some specific investigations. A bronchoscopy or an airway assessment helps to find out a missed H-type fistula which could be a cause of recurrent aspirations. The bal, which is got by bronchoscopy could show neutrophilia or lipid-laden macrophages which is a sign of recurrent aspiration pneumonias. A barium swallow could tell us whether this child is aspirating the food or whether there is some reflux. However, the gold standard to find out the severity of reflux stays 24-hour esophageal pH impedance study 
which finds both the quality as well as the quantity of refluxate which is going up through the esophagus and entering the trachea. Next, we have a different type of respiratory distress which involves tachypnea and dyspnea with a deep, regular and rapid kind of breathing typically called as Kussmaul's breathing. They often come with fruity breath odor. They have some signs of dehydration and some altered melted status. This kind of breathing is mainly to wash out all the excess CO2 accumulation in cases typical as diabetic ketoacidosis. However, a differentiating factor is that there is no cough associated with respiratory distress in DKA. Next, we come to certain rare underlying genetic causes of respiratory distress. These kids might have some dysmorphic facial features, poor weight gain, some chest wall abnormalities. On examination, they could have crackles, persistent V's, poor cough reflex and hypotonia. The definitive investigative choice stays genetic testing. On the same track, there could be various other systemic diseases which could have respiratory manifestations over a period of time. Kids who have very early onset meconium ileus, persistent wet cough, recurrent pneumonias, sticky foul smelling stools with definitive failure to thrive could have something called as cystic fibrosis. One should definitely ask for consanguinity of parents and previous sibling death to confirm your clinical diagnosis. Specific investigations to diagnose cystic fibrosis stays your sweat chloride levels, your CT chest over a period of time to look for bronchiectasis, a bronchoscopy with a bronchialveolar lavage could show certain specific organisms like pseudomonas and finally the diagnosis is proven by whole exome genetic testing. Similarly, a close cousin of cystic fibrosis is something called as primary ciliary dyskinesia. These kids present with very early onset respiratory distress, multilobar involvement, have some upper airway obstructive diseases, recurrent ear infections, could also come with associated constipation. Often these kids have situs inverses or dextrocardia as an associated problem. In these kids, CT of the chest as well as paranasal sinus could help to clinch the diagnosis. However, specific tests involve high-speed video microscopy of nasal scrapings, a nasal nitric oxide and the definitive diagnosis is again by a genetic test. We should always keep in mind that kids with severe respiratory infections, persistent respiratory complaints, unusual pathogens isolated and recurrent respiratory infections often come with underlying immunodeficiencies and hence they should be worked up accordingly. Other system involvement having respiratory complaints could be either rheumatologic which could be secondary to a secondary serositis involving lungs, most commonly pleuritis, some vasculitis of your pulmonary vessels. There could be rare malignancies, some airway malignancies like carcinoid tumor, a mucopidermoid carcinoma or a pleuropulmonary blastoma could have persistent non-resolving complaints. Secondaries to other malignancies could also present with certain respiratory complaints. Specific drugs like ACE inhibitors could cause cough which is drug induced cough so that history is also very important. Finally we come to a very common cause of cough in adolescent age group. This is a loud honking kind of cough specifically during the daytime which is absolutely not present at sleep. This is associated with intermittent episodic rapid breathing which stops on its own. On deep dive there is some background history of some psychological stress factors with no other localizing signs or symptoms. All the investigations are normal. So, after you have ruled out all the organic cause, this last kind of cough stays as psychogenic cough. So, with all these things, we can very well be rest assured that you have completed all non-respiratory causes of cough. So, I would like to conclude by saying we should first rule out the common respiratory etiologies for respiratory complaints. However, we should also take into account the background history and not take respiratory complaints in isolation, especially when the child is not responding to your given line of management. Always rely on your clinical diagnosis before you jump onto your advanced investigations. Thank you.